Oftentimes we believe that this is what we're here for, is to be very successful as human beings. But that's kind of an illusion because people who attain what we see as successful doesn't make them many times any more happier or fulfilled, whatever that they uh, are able to reach to as far as any goals, such as money, fame, fortune, climbing the corporate ladder, even sometimes finding the right other body <laughs> in our life sometimes, not all the time, thank goodness for the ones that are a match. But oftentimes it's, it's, a, it, it's a struggle. It's, it's a challenge to make relationships work of any kind. It's a commitment. You have to work at it. And it's not always perfect because we don't live in a perfect world. So I wanted to talk a little different. In fact, what's interesting about the message today is really this is one of the first messages that I ministered here three years ago when I first took over here as Heartlight Spiritual Center. I just kind of rebranded it. But the message at that time was found in Psalms 127.1, unless the Lord builds the house, we build in vain. Unless the Lord builds the house, our spirit builds the house, we build in vain. So I'm going to talk about building the house. Building the house and finding spiritual success. We all know and sometimes need to be reminded that we had a pre-existence before we ever incarnated into this human experiment, <laughs> into this human incarnation. Many religions surprise me who do not embrace the idea of pre-existence and believe that life begins at conception, physical in conception in the womb. And a lot of these people are, are Christians who are Bible-believing Christian people. And because they don't read the Bible for themselves, but let it be filtered through some minister or some official who has gone to some theology school, and only see the Bible through the lens of their organization or the denomination or religion. In other words, if you're, say, a Baptist, to you, God's a Baptist. <laughs> if you're a Methodist, God's a Methodist. If you're a Catholic, God would have to be a Catholic. But we have not seen God, the essence, the presence. And <clears throat> so I'm using the term God here as the spirit that we call higher self, authentic self, or using the religious term, the Holy Spirit. So I will use all those terms so I can meet you at every level of your thinking. If you come from a more biblical Christian background, you may understand more the term Holy Spirit or God, or you may understand it more as source, universe. If you're a new thought, probably it's mother, father, God. We call it so many different things, but it is that which it is. I am that I am. Whatever you call me doesn't make me any less that which I am. And we have learned that that God is not a God out there. In the sky somewhere, but it is the God in us. Everybody say that, the God in me. That's a powerful thing. When we had the meet and greet and we did this song, I see Christ in you, namaste. Do you realize what you're saying when you say namaste? 
you're reminding person that God's in them. For that's what it means. I recognize or salute the God in you. That's life changing. To realize some God that you thought was far off somewhere is actually finding its dwelling in you as a divine presence. You can't make God any closer than that. You don't have to pray to some far off God to appease some God or to manipulate God into blessing you. All you have to do is access, access God in you. We do that through prayer, meditation, contemplation, visualization, and all the wonderful tools that have been given to us throughout the metaphysical community. Realize that your life is God's building. Your life is God's building. But we must build according to God's plan for our lives. And as I was saying that so many Christians who are based, Bible based and have not really read the Bible by removing the lens of their religion and their dogma and their doctrine has not seen important parts of the Bible that speaks beyond the boundaries and limitations of their religious doctrine. For years, I've preached from the Bible to Bible people. And sometimes these Bible people who think they know the Bible, and I have quoted their Bible, and they have rebuked me for what I said, even though it's in their Bible. Because it did not fit the dogma or the doctrine of their belief system. Are you with me? Yes. And one of those places and I, that I've run into that does not believe in pre-existence, that we're conceived into a body and then the spirit comes in at that point and incarnates, rejected the idea of pre-existence before the physical journey starts with conception. And that's in Ephesians 1 and 3 that says War, we were found in God before, before the foundation of the world. That, I've had people challenge me because they didn't think I was in the Bible and was shocked when I could find this in the Bible to prove from the Bible pre-existence that we have lived in the mind of a creator long before we began this journey into the density of dimensions in which we can experience through the five senses. This scripture that says, unless the Lord builds the house, the builders labor in vain. This verse reveals that the key to spiritual success in any endeavor and God's absolute sovereignty over every person and event is only by connecting to the divine leading and guiding of our higher spiritual self. If any activity that we endeavor, we must learn to check into God's direction and God's plan and purpose before we build it. Before we build it. Now a lot of us on a human level have a built-in nature that we inherited through the ancestral story through the cultural story. Oftentimes I say, well, that's just like my mother was. Tim may even say that to me, knowing my mother very well, saying, you're just like your mother. <laughs> I'll give you one example is I'm early to everything. Get that? 
I'm early to everything. I'm always early. My mother was early. If she had a doctor appointment, we'd go in there. Two hours later, she'd be sitting on the bed with her hat on, ready to go. And I'm pretty much that way. It really bothers me if I am not early. That's built into my human nature. And I have some other things I could tell you about that aren't near as funny and interesting that I also have built into my human nature. So either I'm going to build my life house built up on the human story or I'm going to learn to tap in to God's story for me. Every one of you have come in with a divine purpose for why you are here incarnating on this planet and have been doing it for thousands of years in what we call third dimension. Many of us have believed that certain things would bring us some kind of success. And I'm talking about success in things that are not tangible, such as really money's the big one. And I'm not putting down money. I think it's great if you can get the money and you can be prosperous and, 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 and not let money have you, but you have money to be a blessing, to make you free, to endeavor and indulge yourself into your spiritual purpose that's here. And that's what money can do for you. Money can set you free from the system of survival. You that have reached this level of consciousness that we call Christ consciousness, at this time should have certain freedoms from the third dimensional systems of the world. And a lot of you here have that in retirement, inheritance, or in some way you have been able to free yourself that you don't have to get up every morning and go clock in some corporation and some of you who still work most likely and I'm just assuming and I could be wrong that your work is pretty much within your choice and power to some degree in other words more entrepreneurship You understand what I'm saying to you? And this is why I do not mind us being a little bit of a more mature generation. I hear rumblings a lot about how much we need young people. I think it'd be great if young people would come here, but it's going to take young people with old souls. Because I got a lot of old people with still too young of souls. Somebody says, we have no babies. I said, oh yeah, we got babes in Christ. Who want the sincere milk of the word. Many of you are at a different rhythm of life. You can come, a lot of you, to the Wednesday morning class. You're free to. You're free not to. But the point is, you're free. Whether you come or whether you don't come, but the majority is why we have a good and large turnout in this class is because so many people have made themselves free enough from the systems of the world that they can use and choose their own way they're going to use their energy, life energy. Most people in third dimension human experience mostly use their time in survival mode. People are so busy. Everybody's busy. But sometimes I don't know where they're going. 
77 is so busy. <laughs> and I think, where are they really going? And where they're going if they get there, what's it going to do for them? Are they going to grow because of the journey? Are they going to something that is going to enrich their minds, their souls, their spirit? And this is why Heartlight has tried to be a more progressive teaching ministry. I don't want us to get stuck into routine. That's why I changed some of this around a little bit. It was subtle. But I told you last Sunday that we are finishing, there's a cycle being finished at 7300 Mallard Creek Road. Something new is trying to break in to this community. I do not know 100% what it's going to look like and what it is. And this is why I'm calling up on a group of people to come together who are visionaries and start using visualization so that we can bring in the new pattern that is breaking through for us here at Heart Light. And then I want you to open your hearts and your minds for change because change is coming. <laughs> and I feel it deep in my soul. I am not interested in another three years of coming in and doing the same thing at the same time and going through mentally all these things and whatever. We need to utilize our time differently of what is left to us in the third dimension. You need to revisit your own time. How much time are you giving a day to your spirituality? I don't have time. I want to meditate, but I didn't have time. It's too late. I'm too tired now. Of course, of Miracles says, only give me five minutes of your willingness, and the Holy Spirit will do great things to undo the illusion of your life. We who are trained from transcendental meditation, TM method of meditation, are told to do it 20 minutes twice a day. Often Tim and I get one 20 minute in if we do good. But it's so easy to not have time for meditation, contemplation, research, and study. I've tried to encourage you here to do some of your own research. Don't put it all on me. Don't pay Moses to go to the mountain and see what God's saying and come back secondhand and tell you. That's what happened in the, in the old book is that a half a million Israelites thought they wanted to hear from God, but when God spoke, all they heard was a bunch of thunder that scared them to death. So they turned over to Moses and said, you go find out what this guy wants and come back and tell us. And we've been telling people second-handed, third-handed ever since. I am here to help you to hear God for yourself, not just through David. I have no desire to be your guru. <laughs> I have no desire really to be your leader. I like what it said about Paul. It says, follow me as I follow Christ. Don't follow me because of my position or my label or because of uh, my ability to speak or whatever else. You follow me only as I follow the spirit that is in you. For the Holy Spirit is in every one of us, and its function is what? To lead, to guide, to teach, to help us to remember what we have forgotten in the higher atmospheres of our minds and consciousness. You should have firings going on every day. Firings of divine thought in your brain going off. And the old saying is, where there is spiritual firing, there is human wiring of synapses. 
And that is the expansion of human consciousness. But you can't lean on somebody else to do it for you. Many of you have grown to a place where God is letting go of you. If you're wondering where God is, God has let go of you. The indigenous people tried to tell us, one, you are the angels you're looking for, and you are the God that you are looking for. Some of you have not realized in the last few decades for some of you who have sat under metaphysical spiritual new thought teachings that all the while that you were raising your understanding to a point that God could let go. Let's say there's a natural father who is a doctor and his desire is for his son to be a doctor. And let's say that son wants to be a doctor and follow his dad's uh, steps, goes to college and becomes a doctor. And at that point, the doctor of the son equals the doctor of the father. Even though it's his son, there's an equality there that has to be recognized between the two. And this is what is happening to you that is taking on your identity as a divine, sacred being in a human experience that once you are raised to that level, then you are connected to become the expression of all that God is into the earth. Much will be accomplished and done only when there are those who are going to grow up to the point to take on the responsibility of changing the course of the world. This is going to be continued, I'll tell you right now, because I haven't got past the first page. But <laughs> <laughs> and I feel here to give you one of my favorite little portions of the scripture, which I've done so many times, and that's Psalms 82. For God hath taken those out of the congregation of mankind and said to them, Do you not know the world is off course? Why do you let the wicked remain wicked? And why do you let the princes of the world die? Why do you let the world be off course. This is so non-religious what I'm saying to you because we think that only God can do it and if we pray to God good enough, fast enough that we might manipulate God into doing it. Now I'm going to make a statement. God would more answer a prayer for somebody sitting in some religious church out there who doesn't know anything than you. Because you have raised yourself up from sonship and daughtership to God to become also a creator with God. Are you with me? Yes. yes. God is looking for co creative partnership. Now, there's different ways to get involved, and I know we can get into certain good purposes, good groups, good people that are doing good works and good things, and that's fine if that's your direction. But if nothing else, what you can do is spend time in meditation, contemplation, and visualization, and giving every day your investment of your higher self into the collective unconsciousness of the entire planet. So I don't know, I didn't mean to go this way, but I know what Spirit is trying to say to us. I want you to reevaluate what is important to you to reach your success. Because your success is not even a perfect body. As much as I'd love to have a perfectly healed, healthy body, that would be wonderful. As much as I would love to have all the money that I need to fulfill and do whatever I want, which I would love to have, that's not going to give me 
kingdom success. For the kingdom of God is not meat or drink, but it's peace and joy and righteousness in the Holy Spirit. Any success in the world will not last. You'll want more. It wasn't long ago that Soma Energetics wanted to reach a certain amount of money a year. Not long ago, within the last two and a half months ago, we wanted to reach a certain level that is double for what we was bringing in. And that has happened in the last two years. That we have doubled what was bringing in. And what are we saying? It's not enough. Now we got a new plan. Now we got a new goal of what we want to do and how much money we're going to need to do it. And I'll guarantee you if we got there, we still wouldn't feel satisfied, but we'd come up with something else that we needed to do. (laughs) We're never looking young enough, thin enough, pretty enough. Nothing is ever enough. Because we're looking for the success of the soul in the things outside of ourselves. Ah, so much I want to say. But I'm going to end with this. Matthew 6 and 33. Wow, I can't believe I know that, but I know the Spirit knows it. Matthew 6 and 33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and these things things, all these things shall be added unto you. Are we seeking the things of the kingdom of God? Now, I feel blessed. I'm going to testify for myself here. I feel blessed because somehow through some innate wisdom and understanding, I made sure that my life was not sold to the system. Including the religious system. <laughs> I'm just testified. I'm not bragging. I'm not coming from the ego. I'm just saying there was some divine purpose in this incarnation for me that I was not to ever connect too much into the system that I lost the, lost the consciousness of my purpose for this incarnation into this human David experience. Which would have been much easier to have done that. I, I should have stayed a part of the religion I was in because I had, I had the family to support me and use me in great ways that made, made me a very successful minister. I was offered everything. But you see, I didn't want to build that house. I had a different plan for a different house. And it gave me the power and the strength to say no in the time of temptation, to sell out. When my uncle said, I can make you a successful minister and will make you an international president of the youth of the Assemblies of God, the largest Pentecostal denomination in the world. How did I walk away from that? Because I carried a different contract. So I've been blessed. I've been blessed. What I'm telling you, I've been blessed with a life that has freed me. I didn't have to go to a 9, 10, 11 hour job every day and then spend my time trying to prepare for the ministry and whatever. But my hours were spent spiritually researching the Bible, looking up the Hebrew, looking up the Aramaic, looking up the Greek. I had the time to do it. That's why I'm where I am with you. That's the only difference between me and you was how time was used. There's no difference in us or me. I'm no more spiritual than you are. We're all a spirit being that is equal with one another. Why am I picking up the mic? Oh, this is going. (laughs) I'm quitting for now. But we're going to talk more about this because it's not too late to change your plan of how you want to build the rest of your life. 
In fact, this should be the most important thing to us who are 60, 70, even 80 years old in this group. This is not the time to go sit on the porch and rock. Amen. <laughs> Unless you got a book or something spiritual with you. This is a time for you to make the deepest commitment you have ever made to your spiritual growth toward awakenment. You're either going to build your house on a solid rock and when the storm comes, we used to say when the storm comes, the storm is here. <laughs> How are you going to hold up? Do you think people over there, what they're going through, really care about their bank account right now or their corporate job or whatever? All they're trying to do is survive. Find a place of safety to survive. None of that is important to them right now. You think their labels are important to them? Who's a president and a CEO or whatever? None of that is. And when the storm reaches here, which in some way it has, America's going through its own storm politically. Huh? If your house is built on a solid rock, it will stand and be unmovable. If you're building on the sifting, seeking sands of man's ideas and concepts, the storm will blow your house down. Not your foundation, but your house. The Bible says whether we want it or not, every man, every woman must build. When you get up in the morning, I get up in the morning, how do we want to build that day? Are we going to let them build our day? Or are you going to build your day? Are you going to let your family build your day? Your kids build your day? I'm going to get real personal here. But some of you need to give, quit giving all your power to it. You need to learn to say no to some people in your life, including some of your kids. You don't always have to sell out to be a successful mother or a successful dad or a successful daughter or whatever else it is. The most successful you can be is to stay in alignment with your divine purpose and keep your power. Let us pray and affirm this message today. For the Spirit knoweth how to speak to us. Today we ask for the Spirit to make alive to us the voice of God. As the voice of God has been heard through each one of us individually. For maybe the one sitting beside us heard something differently than the other one that's on the other side. But we've heard it the way Spirit wanted to give it to us. What we've heard that in any way we wasn't sure how to judge it right or wrong, good or bad. We put it in neutral waiting for contemplation to resonate it with our innate intelligence. God, today before this people, I turn Heartlight over to you, the builder and the architect of Heartlight. I am not the builder. I will build for you. And I hope collectively we will all build Heartlight according to the divine design for Heartlight in the next step. I invite you to open your hearts and your mind and just say yes to God. I say yes to God for my individual life. I say yes to God for this community called Heartlight. I say yes to receive. We thank you, Holy Spirit, that you have a plan and a vision for us. Make us willing followers of that plan and purpose. And we all say, thank you, God. Thank you, God. 
Thank you, God. Thank you. And so. Thank you.